Hey, what's up, everybody? So I was uh, fortunate enough to be one of those guys that got an RTX 3090 several months ago. Um, you know, just a combo deal off Newegg. So I got this really cool motherboard uh, that's not that great that is for older Intel processors, and I'll probably end up throwing away if I don't, I don't know, just take random things off of it for fun or build something for my kid. I don't know, whatever. But the main point here is that uh, I got the card, and uh, that was fun, and it was great to get. But the thing that I noticed about the card that a lot of people have noticed about these cards is that they get really hot, like stupid hot. The uh, idle temperature for this thing before I put uh, my current cooling solution on was idling generally at about 7, or, uh, not 7, it was idling usually around 50 to 54 Celsius. And that's with my room at a temperature of like 74 Fahrenheit, which is not very good, especially considering that the graphics card itself, I have in, it's in a custom built desk that has the ability, it gives the room plenty of air. It has its own fresh air source that it can pull from outside the case. It exhausts on its own. It's completely separate from everything else. And the thing still runs that hot. So if you have it in a case, my God, it's probably melting. So you know, mine would thermal throttle any time I played a game, so I had to go ahead and get water cooling. So today I'm going to do this video where I talk about, you know, is it worth water cooling for, you know, general anybody? And is it worth water cooling for the performance and, you know, the gains from it and for the price? So uh, let's get started. As you can see here, um, like I told you before, my, my idols were you know, around 50 to 54 Celsius, uh, just sitting here with nothing on. And as I can see with hardware monitor here, I've got currently about 36 Celsius, which is real good. That's, I mean, it's 20 degrees over ambient roughly, but that's, that's still pretty good. Um, and memory is 56. And let me just tell you, the memory is going to run hot. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. I don't know if there are any, there might be like one or two full coverage water blocks out there um but they're going to be hard to get and they're going to be expensive and honestly probably not worth it so i'll tell you what i got and i'll show you here uh prepare yourself for my face to look extremely washed out and white because man chrome in the background and white and screens and wow i got mine from ekwb uh we'll go with the water block here so if you go on ekwb they have a whole series of uh graphics card uh, water blocks and a whole page full of ones for 3080s and 3090s. The 3080 and 3090 versions are basically the same for, I mean, really every manufacturer. There's a couple that are a little bit different, but uh, you can pretty much find any video card that you got that you could have bought on here, which is really nice. And there's not very many options. Honestly, they're all pretty much going to be the same things. Some are going to be just this uh, flat black, no window or anything. And then most of them have some sort of a, you know, a seedal window that you can look through. Um, but you should have an option for both, or I think most of them. But anyway, mine was the, uh, I have the, uh, the Asus Tough version was what I managed to get my hands on. And uh, it's this. So this it runs about 175, mostly. That's actually kind of on the low end. Most of them are running like 180, 185, I think it was. Yeah, so uh, that one's, this is one of the cheaper ones, which is kind of nice. Um, as far as, uh, you know, manufacturing quality and everything, one of the one that I got looked great. Um, and I'm not like anybody special, so they didn't give me, they didn't know I was buying it or anything and give me something that they knew was good, which is nice. Um, so I, I got a good product. I'm not going to show you guys the install because it's already installed and what would be the point of me like taking it apart and showing you that would be a huge hassle and huge pain and really that's not the point of the video. Um, I will talk a little bit about the install though. Um, it is kind of sucky just to be you know flat out honest. If you're curious you can open the installation manual and uh, the part about it that really sucks is uh, see this right here it requires scissors. You know why it requires scissors? Because they give you thermal pads in like these like sticks of bubble gum, pretty much. And uh, your job is to cut the thermal pads and place them over all of the VRMs and the memories and just everything. You got to place these things on all the things that are mentioned here. And it is real dumb. 
Um, you don't have to cut them to each individual one. I mean, realistically, you can just look at the back of the water block and figure out where the raised parts are and say, yeah, I need one here and here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's dumb. You know what you would think if you're buying these things, they would, you know, just pre-attach a thermal pad to all these spots or, you know, at least pre-cut the things for you. But eh, I, I guess it's okay if you want to, you know, customize it. It's just, it, it made the installation process take a lot longer than it should have. Um, but, you know, neither here nor there. Um, and I will say they give you a ton of screws, a ton of hardware. Like I got all these little plastic washers and all these extra screws. And I was like, what am I going to do with all these damn things? Because they're not really specific on what to use where. And it's just like, all right, cool, whatever. You just throw the damn screws in, and if it tightens up, then you're good. But uh, anyway, <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. And then as far as the rest, if you're curious, uh, for the pump, I got a pump reservoir combo. I went with this one here, this quantum kinetic, whatever the heck, uh, pump and reservoir combo, which was, I mean, it was nice. It doesn't, uh, it's not super loud. I mean, I'm running it at full tilt right now, and because it's too lazy to plug it into a, you know, a port I could control on my motherboard. And uh, I, mean, I can't really barely hear it. Um, the fans, I actually can't hear it very well either um, because they're only at like 30 or 50%, I think. So good. I think I actually at 30% right now while it's idling. So it's still real good. And then I got, uh, I actually got the slimmest radiator possible. Um, that was a 240 radiator. So two 120 millimeter fans on it. Um, Cause that's just what I happened to be able to fit where I had my graphics card going. Um, and that is actually working well. So you could, you could go with a thicker radiator. Um, you actually probably could get away with like the thickest 120 millimeter, or 140 millimeter fan or 140 millimeter radiator. If you wanted to, you would just need a good static pressure fan to make sure you're actually getting the cooling you need. But, uh, yeah, a lot of options do whatever you want to do. I'll just tell you that this is what I use. So if you wanted to mimic my setup to get similar results, this is what you could do. So that all being said, we'll go ahead and look at, uh, you know, actual what you get out of gaming. Starting with World of Warcraft here, uh, we're going to get an idea of how things look, um, how the temperatures go up. So uh, you see the temperature goes up a little bit here. I, uh, I started this up earlier, had some technical difficulties, and uh, that's why you see the temperatures are already a little bit elevated from where they were. But uh, that being said, um, here we are. So we're in game. We got uh, max settings, got ray trace shadows on, DirectX 12 going, um, basically everything at max, and we're at 4K. And uh, everything looks pretty good. Everything looks pretty solid, pretty smooth as I fall down, you know, doing whatever. Um, but the key thing here is looking at temperatures. And you also keep in mind that I'm using the graphics card for a lot of different things right now. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually doing video recording on the same machine. Uh, I'm running, you know, so running the game, running my camera, it's doing the NVIDIA broadcast buffering stuff. It's, uh, it's doing a lot and this is where we're at. So, uh, pretty, pretty stable here. We see that the max temperature I've been at is 51 Celsius. Te the memory temperature is 74 max. Um, and you know, that'll fluctuate a little bit because as it starts to go up, the fans start to kick in and then that drops the temperature down a little bit. So, you know, you could set the fans a, little, a bit higher and maybe, you know, maintain the temperatures a little bit lower. Um, but as you can see, uh, the GPU is not, it's not going, it's not getting too hot. Uh, the memory is not being too hot. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. There's no, there's no issues here. Um, we do see some limiting going on towards the bottom. If you look at under performance, there's a little bit of limiting going on, but I think that's just, I think it's just the way the card is operating based on the settings I've got it on. I could probably, I could probably unlock some of that and let it, you know, overclock up higher. In fact, I'll do that. Let's just see what happens if I do that. Because I don't want to be accused of not being thorough here. So I'll turn, I'll uh, open up my, my app for the card. 
and we'll set it to overclock mode. So we'll boost up the clock speed. Should go up to like 17, 25 is the, the boost clock now. Um, and it's actually higher than that. It's like 2010 right now. So, okay, so yeah, the limits are kind of going away at this point other than the voltage limit, so that's good. And then once I close the app, it freaking shuts itself down again. I freaking hate this app, I swear. <laughs> Why do I need to keep the app open? Why, app? Why are you so lame? Just do what I want you to do without being dumb, please. Anyway, okay. So we'll let that do its thing. Um, leave that on in the background. I want this stupid window to go away. Okay, uh, so... Uh, temperatures, yeah, see, really no difference when I turn the uh, overclocking profile on. Not a whole lot of difference, still at, you know, 51, 52, 76 maximum for the memory, 74 currently. So, the thing about, <laughs> about the, uh, the card is the memory on these water cooling solutions that you're going to find, at least all the EKWV ones, uh, they're not going to be full coverage because, well, they're full coverage on the front. They're not full coverage on the back, though. And the back is where a lot of the VRMs and uh, a lot of the memory is just sitting out there. And unfortunately, you know, nobody's made a full coverage card because it's probably a nightmare to do. Um, honestly, <laughs> uh, I'm sure it can be done. I'm sure there's a couple out there. I, I think I have seen a couple uh, reviews of them, but they're going to be hard to find out in the wild and actually get one. Um, if you can get one, you know, for your particular card, sure, go right ahead. Uh, you'll definitely be able to keep your memory cooler. But uh, I mean, as you can see, though, just getting the heat away from the GPU and getting the other memory cooled is actually going to cool the majority of the memory as well. Uh, a lot of that heat will just kind of transfer its way back in anyhow. Um, and if you can, you know, get a fan on the back of the on the back of the graphics card uh, backplate, that will also help with moving some of the the heat off of there. Uh, I don't have one doing that, so and kind of is what it is. But uh, yeah, it's it's not a bad solution. I mean, obviously, it's doing what's doing. Um, the highest I've seen the temperatures go on this thing are about 56 or so for the graphics and uh, for the GPU, and then I think 80 or so for the memory. And I didn't really notice any thermal throttling at that point. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Now, is it worth it is kind of the question that a lot of people are going to ask here. Well, I would say yes. Uh, and the reason I would tell you that is because... If you're gonna pay, you know, I don't know what these cards are even going for now. I think maybe twelve, fourteen hundred dollars. If you're gonna pay over a thousand dollars for a video card, and you're gonna spend the time to get one because they're not even that easy to get right now, still after you know so long of these things being out there, um, yeah, you definitely should water cool it because, you know. Even if you're not going to overclock it, even if you're just going to let it stay on, you know, minimal settings and just do its thing, uh, it's really better for the card to stay cool. It'll prevent it from, um, you know, premature, uh, what's that word, failure. Um, and that's really important because it would really suck to get one of these cards and then it just kind of goes bad within a few years because, you know, you, you haven't cooled it. Um, and if you're one of the people that changes out your your graphics card every few years, I guess it doesn't matter. But uh, I mean, if you're going to spend this much on a card, you might as well spend the extra six seven hundred dollars, which is about what it's going to cost you, honestly, to get you know a water cooling solution for it. Um, it's it's extra work and it's extra money, but in the end of the day, it's you're going to be happier with it in in the long run. So I would definitely get, especially if you're doing things like streaming or you're trying to, uh, you know, edit videos and all kinds of other random things. If you're doing more than just gaming, uh, I would I would definitely go ahead and spring for water cooling. And, or if you're in, like me, if you're in like a hot climate where it, it gets real warm and you don't want it to uh, throttle all the time. Because if you're in a warm climate and you play a few games on max settings, I, 
you will absolutely be throttling this card all the time. So that's pretty much my uh, opinion on the on the matter. It's what I'm thinking. Uh, if you got any comments, if you guys have suggestions, or you know think that maybe I missed something, or you want to ask a question, please do so in the comments below because uh, I will be happy to answer those. And uh, let's be honest, uh, eh, it kind of pushes the ratings up on the videos, which helps me out. Uh, but if you also want to help me out, please like as well, because liking also tells uh, YouTube that hey, you're okay. And if you want to be super awesome, you can subscribe as well, because subscriptions tell me that you care. And, uh, you know, I really, I, I care. Yeah. Yeah, I really care. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. And, uh, you know, until next time, try not to die. Thank <laughs> you.